to the Monday Monologue. This week we're going to talk about a few different topics. First thing that would be pretty hard to miss is what do we got going on over here? Got the Apple Transformers came in from Edcore for the KT88 or possibly KT120 monoblocks. 100 watt monsters. This is going to be a beast of an amplifier. So that's coming up later this spring. I know a lot of people are like, yay, let's get going on this, but gotta wait because first we gotta do the 47 amp that I talked about earlier this week and finish up the little 6P1. And I get a lot of questions about, you know, where did you go to engineering school and you know what you got a career in electronics? No guys, I keep telling y'all. I am just a hobbyist like you are that has always loved electronics, g gotten involved with tubes and playing around with tube amplifiers, and I just taught myself this stuff and I'm trying to share what I'm learning with you, and I'm still learning. And I get a lot of questions with people sending me, you know, formulas and high-level math and things talking about theory with tubes and stuff that honestly I don't have any idea about but I do know what sounds good and I have learned enough some people would say to be dangerous to be able to piece together different projects into a single amplifier and tune it until it sounds good and like these KT88 there's probably 200 push-pull KT88 amplifier schematics out there. And am I going to start from scratch? No. I'm going to look at what's out there, try to figure out which one looks like is fairly simple and easy and is tunable and that maybe I can make a few small changes to to kind of make it my own and then build it. Tubes have been around a long time, guys. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. The other thing that I've done, like with my 6SQ7 amp, there was a whole chart in there that said, okay, if you want to make this much amplification out of this tube at this voltage, here's how you do it. Why should I re-engineer what the engineers that made the tube are telling us to do? It doesn't make any sense to me. And just like these 6S and 7s, man, these things have been used for decades. Do I need to sit there and draw out load lines and calculate up milliamps and all that? No. I mean, the tubes even tell you for a Class A amplifier, here's how to run it. Why would you argue with that? And I mean, you can look at the load lines once you kind of figure out your bias point, or you can look at the curves and look at your bias point and kind of go, yeah, that looks like I'd be... But this isn't rocket science, guys. And again, I have zero interest in straining my brain. I don't have anything to prove to anybody. If somebody really enjoys math, like engineers all do, that's why they went to engineering school, they can do pages of calculations. And I know I've talked about this before, but, you know, one guy on, I think it was DAY Audio, when I was working through that 300B amp that I tried to build using that Sun Audio, J.C. Morrison, direct couple 6S and 7 mess, he was, you know, he was gone through just literally pages on the forum, like, 15 posts of all these complicated math equations where he had calculated up that this thing's got to work and it's going to sound great. And I told him, I said, man, it is not going to work out like you think it is. And then he built it and said, this thing sounds like crap. It's like, I told you. He goes, why didn't it make the power that these calculations? It's like, I don't know, somewhere in those you know, 15 pages of posts, you've made a mistake. So, anyway, 
that's going to be my weekly rant, and that's going to be my explanation. If people want to put in the comments asking me, you know, really high-level math questions about, you know, what's the formula for this, that, it's like the formula for figuring out the bias on the tubes, I'll put the web page in the description that I go to where you plug in some numbers and it calculates it for you. Why should I do it when it's that simple to have a web page that does it for you and it never screws up? And I have kind of learned, gotten a little bit of debate with somebody on, I think it was Audio Karma, about, well, SE amplifier output tubes don't always sound their best when they're run near the max. In my experience, they do. And don't have 20 years of experience of doing this to back that up, but every amp that I've played with that didn't run the output tubes pretty hard had issues. Here's another example of one. And I feel like what's holding this amp back is the power transformer is too weak to run these output tubes anywhere near their max dissipation values and we're running into all kinds of weird asymmetrical overdriven problems and stuff and I don't think this would be happening if the tubes were driven like I think they need to be driven so some of this stuff I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants and so far I think I've got a pretty good track record I fixed two China amps that now sound great that been out for years and nobody else seemed to be able to figure out what was going on with them and maybe it was because they were over analyzing it from an engineering standpoint and saying well at that voltage and looking at these curves that should work okay when it doesn't it's just like those spy sims you know that's all great that some of you guys one guy was bragging you know I've simmed three or four hundred different amplifiers well great have you built any of them have you listened to any of them just because it shows on a spice sim that it's got 0.1 percent distortion build the thing and show me that it does because i've seen so many people that have designed things like that in spice and then build them and then say hey why didn't my amp work like the spice sim said Go figure. So anyway, wanted to show you these cool output transformers. I'm really excited about these things. They're like, ugh, man, it's a big iron. The other cool thing that I got last week, got this really nice solid state rectifier replacement little gizmo. And one of the things I've had against these was, obviously, when you got an amp like this that has the tube in the front center here you know when you come in here and you put one of these little gizmos in that's pretty ugly I think everybody can agree that's not attractive this little guy on the other hand it looks pretty spiffy and this has also got a thermistor inside of it so that it helps with the inrush current that these don't have. And so I'll put a link to the guy's eBay auction. And they weren't real expensive. It was a kit you put together. Had some big fat uh, diodes. So should hold up well. Like I said, it comes with a thermistor in it. And everybody say hi to Dolly. And I think it's a good value. It was easy to put together. And it looks better than any of these other solid-state replacement little gizmos that I've seen. So here's your little bonus tip for the week. So anyway, we're going to do some more experimenting on this. Probably going to start doing the design work on the 47 next week, as well as maybe starting into the fab work on the chassis. Hopefully that'll go pretty smooth. And then we can start doing a little experimenting with it, and I want to at least get the power supply built, get the 47 tubes installed, get them wired up and biased, and see where we're at. So I think that'll be a good starting point for that project. So anyway, 
Hope you're enjoying the channel. If you are, please subscribe. Please like the video. And we'll see you next week for the Monday Monologue.